whether it's flowers or a landscape or a dog or, or a bunny, no matter what I'm painting, I, I always ask myself why I am drawn to that, to whatever it is. And um, they're going to drive me crazy. I might have to put them in for my own sanity. <laughs> um, hey, cut it out. You know what? I'm just going to go do that. So you talk amongst yourselves for a moment, okay? <laughs> okay. Come on, you guys. Come on, we're going in. Okay. Oh. Do you have any animals? I do not right now, Sheila. And I miss them. I'd like to get a dog Aww. in a year or so. How many dogs do you have? Uh, two. Mm -hmm. And they're both a little bit on the older side. My old, The oldest one is 13. And the, the little bee, Sean, I have is, she's eight. She's the queen. <laughs> So, <laughs> she lets everybody know if they're doing right or wrong. <laughs> oh. What's the weather like up there? And where are you again? Oh, Captain's Cove. Greenbackville. It, it's kind of dreary. It's, there's no sun out. And just real cloudy and okay. yep. the fabulous noisemakers are back inside. So they were so good yesterday. <laughs> but uh, we didn't go for a walk today. And I think that's why. Uh oh. They're all upset. So okay. So um, I always ask myself first thing, what I what really attracts me about a scene or a painting or a dog or whatever it is and and then I try to remember that and focus on it while I'm painting. So um, here, I, I loved, I really love the puddle and the way it spreads out over the furrows and the rows. I also just mm -hmm. love the perspective of all of those rows going out. And um, I like the little house. So mm -hmm. that's the reason that mm -hmm. I, that I, Took this picture and the, and why we're gonna paint that. Um, so, you all set with your paints? Everybody set with your paints and your canvas and everything? I'm set with my paints, but should we? Have I don't a have my picture on on screen. Um. Uh, can you see the picture well enough from here? Or did you print? You did so you didn't print the picture out. No, I didn't even think about that. Okay. Um, I can go. No, it neither did I. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, if we sh so say I share the screen, then I'm afraid you're not going to be able to see me paint. Um, yeah. I'll go print mine out. If where you is? Want. Okay. So. Um, we can do that and and then you can see the picture yeah very well okay so you can't see me paint okay. at all but that's 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 probably fine it's, i'll talk you through it does that work for both of you okay yes. thank you that's fine yeah okay okay um so where where i usually start on a landscape is at the farthest away where the sky meets the land or in this case the trees or whatever that is back there and it's about mm -hmm. halfway up the picture um i don't I, I i tend not to like to cut canvases directly in half so i'm gonna move that horizon line up oh. just a little bit and i'm gonna make it i'm gonna use some okay. of my some of my leftover junky paint from yesterday, which is uh, 
well. Okay. I'm assuming, okay. So, so I'm just taking a little bit of paint on my knife Jeez. and and uh, moving in a line, a horizon line, and moving my the tip of my knife up and down a little just to get that little scrapey stuff. And uh, since we're going to have things uh, working their way up into the sky, um, it's a good idea to establish the sky a little bit. I, I would do early in this painting. So you can see in this picture, and you'll start to see in real life, um, I really think that one of the great things about painting is that how it teaches you to look, it teaches you to see things. And um, so, you know, start paying attention to, again, things that attract you and what there is about it that attracts you. And also pay attention, start paying attention to the way things look. Um, the sky is often much lighter at the horizon than it is directly overhead. And that's because um, uh, essentially you're looking through more molecules, more water vapor out to, the, to a far horizon than you are directly overhead. So that's why it's a little lighter stuff in the distance. It's a little lighter and your your skies are a little lighter at the bottom. So I'm actually going to go with just some some white just above those trees. And um, so I have some white on the back of my knife. And uh, I'm, okay. I'm just dragging it along the line. No, oh, I got a little bit of blue in it there. That's fine. I don't want quite that much blue. And then we're going to go back and put put blue over this. So it doesn't matter how thin or wide this initial line is. And if you want to hit the trees, you know, if you want to go right into the trees, that's fine. Um, you'll learn that there's a couple you can make a very sharp edge with your knife. Uh, but if you want to do a little blur thing way back there, kind of take the edge of your knife and sort of drag it along lightly where the sky and the horizon meet. You can blur it a little bit. You can also blur it. You can just get in there with your finger and give it a little blur. You know, you're mixing those two colors together. Robin, how are you doing? Um, okay. Okay, you look tired. I'm very tired. <laughs> I only You're got tired? two hours of sleep last night. Oh, jeez. Just being busy. Oh, I copied man. your canvas. That's I not. I did a black canvas. Oh, great. I had some black cool. acrylic paint, so I put it on there and we'll see. Hey, great. People tone their canvases all sorts of colors. Lots of people out, out west, uh, lots of painters like, they, they, they tone their canvases red or orange. Um, I know a lot of people who tone them as sort of a pale gray, brown, very neutral. Um, I love black, you'll find what you like. Uh, okay, so then let's go with some sky, and I'd say do some of the this little square strokes that we did yesterday. Start with those. Okay. 
if they turn out to be too busy, you can always uh, smush them out. Ooh, that's nice. And we don't have to finish the sky. I think it's just a good idea to get it kind of going up there, especially since we're going to impinge in it with trees and the little building. Sheila, what bet do you use? Oh, um, over here, Pokemon. Uh-huh. I only see someone different when I go over there, so I'm not yeah. real familiar with who I'm singing. I think they'll have uh -huh. a new one. Huh. I, I go to uh, Atlantic Animal Hospital down here, and I, I like them a lot, but it took oh. a while. Yeah. I've heard of good things. What? I've heard good things about them. Yeah. Yeah, they're 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 very nice. Um, the 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 girls in the office are really nice, and a lot of times that's that's what kind of makes it or breaks it for me. Mm -hmm. um, I run into yeah. an awful lot of very snotty um, veterinary office office assistants. Um, yeah. Yeah. So should now, we once be we get our white up into the blue yet, or just doing the blue? Sure. Yeah, you can. You can if you want to. Um, you can do that later. You can do it now, if you like. Um, you can put more white on down at the bottom if you want to. What was her question? Okay. Should, should we be drawing the white up into the blue now? You know, at the bottom of this painting to kind of smooth it out and you can smooth it out or not smooth it out however you like so then way back against the trees on the ground there are several layers of um, grasses or stuff that's growing and you can put them in or you can make them all the same um, if you want, I have a, I have a nice brown that I really like. I I am not a fan of brown at all, really. But I have a, a brown that I found that I really like, and it's this. It's another of these PBOs. It's called Swoop Still De Grain, and it's a, it's like an it's an ochre, but but it's a nice ochre. Um, so I'm going to put a long line of this up against those trees. Now you'll see on the field that, that the brown stops here and then it picks up green over there. So you can do that if you like. I might do it. Sort of interesting. Okay. About two thirds of the way over. I'm going to mix a little of that brown in with my green. Now I think would be a good time to start thinking about the little house and the the rows and where everything else is going to go in the painting um, this is a thing that it's often at this point that i start thinking about the particular spots that things are going to be so 
um, I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm just gonna, that little house, whatever it is. So that sticks up above the horizon just a little bit. And I'm gonna put it there and there. The sun is coming, where is the sun coming from? The sun is coming very strongly from that direction, from the right. So you can see, see the, the light on the trees is to the right and the light to the house is on the right and the shadows are going off to the left. So um, the roof is pretty, pretty bright on this little thing. No. Um, now, I don't do much with my houses. I don't put doors and windows on them generally. Um, not real interested in architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, if you want to, feel free. So I just do little blocky little houses usually. And um, that seems to work. In this house, there's really not much perspective in this house. Um, I made a little bit of a, a side here. I'm going to put a little bit of a bright side in, even though it's not really in the picture. But I want it for the brightness of it. I'm, I'm beginning to think about um, pathways into the painting. They could be real paths. And in, in fact, we have a lot of paths, real honest to God paths in here with all of these rows. But there are also color paths and um, brightness. You know, you can use brightness and darkness to lead the person's eye into the painting. So I'm going to make this right hand side of that building pretty bright. I have white on just near the edge. This is one of these kind of edge things. Just going to draw my knife down from the, the roof point of that little building. Okay. And you don't have to use white. You Sorry. Can it's okay. Everybody all right out there? You could make this a red building if you wanted to, or a blue building, or, or a, you know, you don't have to do the color that's there. I have a friend, Jean Beauvais, who pretty much says, well, if you have a building, you might as well make it red. <laughs> I always thought it was just funny. <laughs> might as well make it red. Ooh, okay. Well, bring the roof out a little. Now you two got to stop me at, at any point if you uh, are having questions or problems or yeah, I, I would like to see the painting what you're doing. Okay. Uh, do you show it up close? Sure. So uh, let me unshare the screen. Oh, pause sharing. Let's see what happens with that. Our screen sharing is paused. Now, can I make this bigger? No. No. All right, so I guess I have to stop this to get us back to, okay. So. Here is, here's my painting. Now it's coming, now it's coming like that. Okay. See, I'm not using enough light. Okay. Okay. Thank now, you. can you show you me one more have one more time how you how you did the building? Sure. So I um the building is it's up a little bit higher than the trees in the back. So 
I that's where I started. I, I, I usually start at the roof. And in fact, I've made it here. I'll do it again because it's a little bit the wrong shape. So I have a, I, I've got some brown on my knife and I'm making a roof line. Then then the, I'm, I'm pulling down just with a little short stroke. So the roof, it's angling like this a little bit. So okay. that, that edge is a little bit di diagonal. This edge is a little diagonal. Here, I'll, I'll outline these in white. I'll outline them in green. How's that? Maybe you can see that. And that. So they're at about a, you know, a slight angle. And then the bottom of the roof is flat. Okay. The bottom edge of the roof. And then you just take some whatever color you're, you want to be using and pull down and, you know, your little short strokes, if you like, down to where it's going to end. And then on the right side, you, you don't have to make much of an angled front of the building, just a little. And you can, you know, start looking at buildings and perspective and um, how the roofs and the sidewalls go with them. This is a little bit wrong what we've done, but it's just too confusing the way it is. Is that helpful, Sheila? <laughs> yes. Or Robin or whoever yes. was asking? Okay. Um, so the building has a door on it. It also has a complicated shadow on it. We might get into the shadow later, but for the time being, I'm just leaving the one side a little bit darker than the other side. I'm not doing that complicated shadow right now. You see what I mean by that shadow? That. And you, okay. If you both have printers, do you want to take a little break and go print this painting on your printer? I, I sent it to you last night. Yes. Um, do you need me to send it to you again? I don't I have it. Okay, I sent it in an email last night. Jeez, you didn't I have it, it, but I don't have a printer. You don't have a printer. Okay. Yeah, I often I don't. Print mine. <laughs> okay. But my, I, my printer usually doesn't work. Um, do you have a... Okay, so you, but you have it, um, Sheila, on your computer, right? The right. Picture last night okay so you can you could actually both of you could do yes. this you could just open it up on your computer and um and have it there so you can flip from the zoom thing to the picture if that helps be honest with you i think i'm one of these i have to see you do it in order to know what i'm doing that's fine yeah, I mean that's how I that's how I learn. It's by watching people do stuff. And I wish I could make this bigger. Um, I, I've I've got an idea. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute you both for a minute. I want to see something. Okay. Okay. No. Okay, now come back. Unmute yourselves. I don't think I can do it. Okay. I was thinking that perhaps if I muted the two of you, I could get me big on there. Robin, you got to unmute yourself. Both of you need to unmute yourself now. Um, see in the lower left hand corner of your screen it says mute and unmute so the microphone in the lower left hand corner of your screen 
down there. Yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. You got it. Sheila, you got it. So right lower left hand corner of your screen, there's a microphone with a line through it. You see that the lower left hand corner of your screen is a microphone with a line through it. So you touch it and to unmute yourself. Can you hear me, Robin? Can you hear, can you hear me? Okay. Um, wave at me if you can hear me. No, you, <laughs> Sheila, I know you can hear me. Robin, wave at me if you can hear me. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, look on the bottom of your Zoom, your Zoom picture on the lower left, there's a microphone. You what want looks it like unmuted a, or muted? You got it. No, unmuted. You got it. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that if I had you both mute yourselves, it would put me larger in the middle so you could see better, but that didn't work. So, okay. Are we ready to go on to the next step? I'm going to go print. Oh, oh you're so you going to go, go print. Ahead. Okay. Oh, I thought you had already printed. No. Okay. Well, we'll hang out. We'll gab. <laughs> I'm still behind, so yes, we got a problem. <laughs> I haven't got the. Okay. We get a tour, Rob. I don't have the green on yet. I'm going away okay. for a minute. Green is easy. We did green yesterday. Just you know, we did that stroke yesterday. Just a long, straight stroke. Stroke. Okay. Bye. Well, I've got Just something on. that might resemble a building, but. Okay, good. Building ish. Oh. Yeah, there you go. It kind of like a lean to, but building ish, I think, is, is plenty good. Flower ish. Good. Excellent. <laughs> so we'll wait for Robin to come back. Oh. <laughs> okay. Now I'm getting myself together here. Okay. Oh, my oil colors look like they're liquid. Nothing but liquid. Ugh. Really? Mm, yeah. Well, squeeze some new out. Let's see. I could I could use some new ones while we're having a little break here. I'll use some purple. Okay. The green is just the long. Is the green the la long flat stroke? Yeah, it's just a long flat stroke. These strokes in the background are are just long flat. You don't want to do anything busy or fancy with them. Just put some put some paint on your knife and then put your knife flat on okay. the canvas and draw the paint along. Um, Cause the what's interesting in this painting is going to be in the front. And so you don't want to distract people too much with stuff. Okay. Like yeah. Okay. Put some green on there. And then we're eventually going to put some, um, oh, a sort of a light yellow. This, this thing. Let me see this. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. All right. So we're going to put the, this light yellow patch in. I'm assuming Robin will be back shortly. Yeah. Oh, okay. And I'm going to take some, some uh, cadmium yellow and then mix it with a little bit of sort of leftover paint. And I have a kind of a muddy light green. Um, uh, it's really You warm. did it with what? The yellow and the... Well, actually, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try it again. Um, I'm going to take some, if you have Naples yellow, that's the color that that is, but I don't. See. you don't. Naples yellow is a great color to have. So I'm going to take some cadmium yellow and some white, Okay. And a, little, a little bit more white. Yeah. And then something to tone that down a little bit. So 
I'm going to take a little bit of gray, grayish brown that I have, and um, and then I'm just dra dragging the, the paint across. You might even start doing the small strokes, the little squares on here, because it's a pretty big okay that we're covering. Oh, I just keep thinking about your dog, and it just makes me so sad. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He's been my buddy, my partner for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I bet he has been. Have you lived here for a while? Are you from here? We bought the house. He, no, I'm from West Virginia. Mm -hmm. uh, we bought the house here uh five years ago mm -hmm. um my husband is from frederick maryland mm -hmm. and um he um we met while he was in college i was i was in early entrance i was a senior in high school he was a senior in college so uh -huh. in in maryland we met that way and yeah, in West Virginia. He went to uh, Shepherd University. Robin's back. Robin's gone. Oh, Robin's right. connecting to audio. Robin's back. Okay. Oh. So. Okay. I hope you didn't wait for me. No, we started, we put some yellow on, a little bit of yellow on in the background. And, um, we're going to, I'm going to, okay. This happened the first time I did this painting too. You see, there's a second field back there with rows in it and furrows. Mm -hmm. I'm leaving it out. Um, yeah. So okay. we're going to go, go with this one in front. And that's partly because of the size of things, but um, it's just it's really complicated back there. And we don't need to do that. So I'm going right now. Sketch in where those rows are okay. going. They're all going back to vanishing point. Now, are both of you familiar with the uh, the concept of a vanishing point in a in a painting or a drawing? Yes. Yes. That there. Okay. And Robin, yes? Yes. Okay. So, um, so there's a vanishing point back there somewhere. So I'm going to um, take my knife and that's going to be one. This is going to be one edge of my rows. And then this This is going to be one edge of my rows. That one's going to come in a little bit. And then same vanishing point. It's going to go there. Now, it's just a little bit different than what's actually in the painting. So if you want to go more with what's in the painting, I mean, in the picture, don't you don't make it such such a focused vanishing point. But I think that's a cool thing to do. So. The rows are going to go, you know, think about your vanishing point, sort of splay your rows out. There we go. So that's my kind of road map into this thing. This one actually is fine. And I'll show you this up close. You see okay. how they're all going going toward a, a central, almost in the center of the canvas, vanishing point. Okay. 
so now we need some green. And the green, we're going to go around the building with the green, and then we're going to go over here with the green. So you're going to need a fair amount of green. Um, you can mix your own green. Hold on a minute. Or you can use bottle green. Um, do you guys have green in tubes or are you mixing your greens? I'm mixing tubes. Okay. Tubes, okay. So um, then I'll use both. I'll do some mixing and some bottled. I've only recently found a bottled green that I really like, actually two of them. And one is this very bright green. Um, it's another of the PBOs. Uh, and it's really, it is the color that is on the outside of the, the um, tube. It's incredibly oh. bright green. Yeah. But then I found, I've never found a dark green that I liked in a tube. But I found this. And this is great. Bob Ross sap green. And it's <laughs> fantastic. Yes. Bob Ross. <laughs> it's fantastic green. Yeah. Um, but uh, so let's mix a little. A green that I like very much mixing is uh, ultramarine and a lemon yellow. Gives a nice, bright, somewhat realistic green. Uh, like that. So bring your green. Bring your green out. You can do it in long strokes. You can do it in uh, short strokes. But I would pull over here. I'd be pulling this green like toward the um, along the same um, perspective lines that we're going to use on the field there. So. You can do little narrow strokes, do long strokes. You can take your, okay. take your knife and do it on the flat part. Uh, it looks like it wants to be a little bit lighter. Than and that's a bright green? That was um, ultramarine mixed with a uh, lemon yellow. And that makes it that makes a pretty bright green. Okay. I, I'm actually, looking at it, I'm going to put a little bit of white in it and um, lighten it up just a little bit. Brighten it up. Because I ended up mixing. Are we all we're all mixing? Yeah. Yeah. So it wants to be a little bit brighter, a little bit, because think about it, the sun is, this was springtime, and the sun um, on the flat, you know, it's really hitting hard on anything that's facing it that's flat, and Texas is sure flat. And then down around the house, we're gonna do the same thing, but go, going in the, other direction, bringing your strokes out the other way. Oops, just painted into my house. Whoops. <laughs> we'll fix that. They're out there still doing whatever it was they were doing. Those, those other dogs would have been barking their full heads off this entire time. <laughs> that was good. We put them in. Okay.
We're going to put in some upright grass when we get to the front of the green, so don't don't worry too much about the front, very front part of your painting yet. Are we filling in the whole rows now? Not yet. Okay, just the edges still. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna start the rows in a minute when we've got when everybody's got their their green more or less in place. And you know, you kind of keep adjusting as you're going along. And remember, it's a painting and it's your painting. And you know, if you want two houses or you want the whole field to be dirt, you can do that. Or, like I said, don't make it a red house. <laughs> I made mine red. <laughs> All right, excellent. Excellent. It's, they stand out way better if they're red. If you're ever like doing a landscape and you have a little teeny house that's very far away and it's just it's just vanishing into your into your landscape, make it red. That's my my sage advice. So um, there, there are a few ways to address the water here. We could do it first, or we could do it last. And I'm not sure what we do the darker. Um, so while you still have some green around, Let's take take the green and and make your little just just put some green along the furrows. Nothing fancy, just you're just pulling the color towards you. I'm going to go back and make the plants much bigger. And then there's going to be that, that great water in here. Um, I'm going to get a little sense of your, your growing plants there. Now, whatever blue you use for the sky. Let's see, what is the best way to do this? Well, let me, let me just try something here for a minute. Keep on doing whatever you're doing. Let's try something here. I think it really doesn't matter. So, all right. So, um, let's fill in some of the between those furrows with sky blue. No, um, just I want you to let's fill in the dirt first. So, okay. Take some browns if you have some browns, and if you don't, mix yellow and purple. That should make you give you a, a brownie gray brownie and just fill in the dirt between the furrows. This is not the finished. And this is where the water is. Dirt. Yeah, stop when you get to the edge of the of where the water is going to be. All right. So about, you know, a little about a third of the way up into your canvas, stop with the brown.
And don't do anything with this little patch on the lower right, right, right yet. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit of green across the top of mine here, just as a highlight. Okay. Now, where the water is, so take, take your sky color same find a find a clear place on your palette first because you you want this to be bright and clean take the blue that you used for your sky and pull down with your knife in between those rows for right now. Are you putting white with it? Get it close. I do. I'm, I'm using the same blue that I used in the sky, which was uh, a little bit of white and a little bit of, okay. I, I used turquoise up in my sky. You guys might have okay. used purple or cobalt or whatever I have a blue color you use. And don't go all the way down to the bottom of the canvas, but go close. You know, leave it an inch, a couple inches. Okay. Mm Now, where you have that blue in, I want you to mix up another, another bit of that same blue using a little bit more white. And we're gonna run across some of the, so you're gonna take it on your knife and using that, that sideways stroke that we used yesterday, we're gonna run across some of the the ridges in the um, those rows. So I'm moving my hand back and forth while I move my wrist along. And that one I'm going the other way. So try one first, and then step back a little bit and look at it. And in fact, now is a really good time to actually stop painting for a moment, turn around, take a break, look at something else. Hi, say hi. Hi. Hi, everybody. <laughs> hi, everybody. Oh. oh. You stand up if you want to. I, I'm in such a weird position. I can't, it's very hard for me to get back here. <laughs> I can stand up. Yay. Ooh, that feels good. Yeah. Okay. And if you can back off of your painting and look at it, do. But if you can't, just, okay, just look away and then look back. What do you think, Robin? You getting there? Yeah, yeah. The water looks really weird. Good. It's interesting. Well, we're not we're not done with the water, and um, and you know this is not a this is not an hour long painting. This is a painting that we're going to get a good start on, and you all are going to finish um, okay. after. 
Yeah, this is a this is a longer painting, but it's a good, it's a really good painting, and it uses everything that we used yesterday that we learned. I prefer the paint. So. Um, all right, so now to go back, let's go back to where the water and the land meet there. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit more of my brown. And now I'm using that same, that same sideways stroke to get the brown into the water a little bit, where the, where the water and the land meet. You don't have to use that sideways stroke. You can use your little, uh, the square strokes, the first ones that we did. But the sideways one, the, the back and forth marbling one, it's going to work really well for the water. So look, I'm taking it all the way across here. I'm going to go I'm going to go back in with a little bit darker some purple That's where water and dirt meet the dirt gets very dark cuz it's cuz it's wet it's darker than the surrounding dirt if you look at the edges of ponds You'll see that. Now, do we want to go down with that? I think we do. So I'm taking my knife and very lightly pulling down into the water with the dark. That stuff that I just put on. And then Taking a little bit of white. Go. When you start getting the little bits of white, so I have just a tiny bit of white on the side of my knife. And I go across the water. Oh, shush. Mm -hmm. And then, then you go back to your rose and start putting in your little grassy stuff. Now, it doesn't have to be green. You could put in orange. Oops, I thought I had some orange on there. You know, who's to say that those little plants aren't orange? Could be orange. And these are just the same little square strokes that we did first, first of all yesterday. Okay. Just a small version, the mini version. As they get closer, they get stuff in the front is bigger than stuff in the back. Dogs are just barking like crazy dogs. Okay. 
And so I'm gonna, some couple of the rows go all the way through the water. So I'm gonna make this one one of them. I'm gonna make this one one of them. This one actually, I'm gonna make it come up out of the water. Oh, the people out in the street, that's what they're barking at. <laughs> people, people are not just, they're not allowed to walk by here. That's really the long and the short of it. <laughs> are your dogs barkers, Sheila? Oh yeah, well, the Lola, the Bichon, mm -hmm. very much. So uh -huh. I mean, I yeah, I know the old guy. Now my blind and deaf old guy, um, he he starts barking when he hears the other guys barking. He doesn't even know what they're barking at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the way it is with my old guy. He used to, yeah. he hasn't barked in a long time. So, uh. oh. okay. Oh, this corner one, that little corner puddle is reflecting the house. See that? So hmm. putting the color of the house in there and then I'm going to put some dark purple, purpley dirt around that puddle. Today's Tuesday, right? Ladies? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Not Wednesday, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Right. Okay. It's Tuesday. Okay, good. Sounds like our trash sounds like our trash guys, but they come on. And then there's some other kind of lumpy dirt over there. Faintly interesting just a chance. So I've got a color. I started using some orange in here as a, a highlight and also a path in through through the painting. So orange. I'm going to take a little of my orange and put some back here on the brown. Just a little way to lead people through Pulling my strokes long down here under the water, in the front of the water. Oh, we're, yeah, you know, I, I told you we were going to do something different in the front, and we are. I almost forgot. But we're not quite there yet. We've still got trees to do. And a fence, maybe. Fence would be good here. And sky, we've got the rest of the sky. Yeah. 
oops. There are many, there's lots and lots. I mean, there's hours more stuff you can do on, on this painting, when, even when we're done here. Um, put in all the cows, some of them. Shall we put a fence in? This fence over here on the right? I can't see. Why not? Um, so there's a very, there's a, uh, there's a fence. So things that are left to do here, trees, but see this, this fence over here on the right? Mm -hmm. It's um, mm -hmm. yeah. just a very narrow um, metal, metal fence and again it's it's another it's a cool way in to the painting and so take your your knife and put a little bit of a dark color on the edge of it and put a fence post pretty pretty high fairly high in the front and then put another one a little bit farther away mm -hmm. More, I'm just just dragging. Okay, then, then as you're making fence posts, don't put them all at exactly the same distance apart, and don't put them all at exactly the same angle. So, even if they are that way, you'll make much more interesting fence. And, and then, of course, you're going to the same vanishing point, so the fence posts get shorter. See what I've done here? The fence posts get shorter as you go toward the background, toward the back. Then when you get your dark, the dark part of their fence posts in, then remembering that the light's coming from the right hand side of the painting, take a bright color. It could be orange, could be white. And give yourself a bright edge on each of those fence posts. Nice to get the bright edge actually close to the <laughs> carry close to the post. Um, when you're painting, somebody said this to me once, and I think they're right. Don't ever put anything in a painting that you're not willing to put a bright side and a dark side on at the very least. So be good. Somebody, somebody's phone. Robin's phone. Mine. I'm ignoring it. Okay, good. So, if you make a sunflower field with like a million sunflowers, don't put them all in unless you're willing to put a, a highlights and low lights on each one. Put in only as many as you're willing to actually deal with. Uh, and that's been okay. very good advice for me. So let's see, should a third, can I put a third color on there? You want to put a medium tone in there. I've got a, um, a sort of peachy yellow, I mean peachy orange. Um, what makes stuff three-dimensional is to have a bright, a dark, and a middle value. 
doesn't matter if they're the right colors or not. Here we go. So that's see? cool. And a lot of times a fence post can very much benefit from a bright little bright cap. Whether it's actually there or not. One of the first paintings I ever sold to somebody I didn't know was um, fence posts in a field in, on, along a road in Wyoming. It was just, it was a narrow little painting mm. of a road with these funny fence posts on it. And uh, they loved it. It was so cool. It was so cool to sell a painting to somebody I didn't know. All right, now, um, it's two o'clock, but I'm gonna go on and at least show you guys trees and the grasses in the front. Is that, does that work for both of you? Sure. Mm-hmm. It works okay. for me. Does anybody, okay, anybody yeah. need a break? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. Let's have a little break. We'll pile it all while we're at it. For dinner, ladies. Leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's what's for dinner here, too. Not nearly as nice as what I had last night. Robin stopped over last night and I shared my dinner of vegetables and quinoa with her. It was good. This morning I made brown Ooh. rice, which I've never made in my life. You have to boil really? that stuff for 45 minutes. Oh. Yes. Who knew? Oh. Yeah. But it's supposed to be really good for you. And it was quite tasty, although it was, I liked it. I, t I tested it. I sampled it about nine minutes before it was done. And it was still kind of crunchy. And I really liked it better then. So next time. Mm. 38 minutes, 35 minutes. <laughs> oh. ah. So your doggy's still with us, Sheila, huh? Yeah, he's Good. just laying in there beside his water bowl. Good. At least yep, he's good. drinking. He's not eating, but he's drinking. I'm eating now. Yeah. Uh, what he's still eating, but really what he does mostly is sleep. You know, he sleeps yeah. probably 23 hours a day. Probably. That's this guy. I'm sorry, you both are having old dogs. Oh. Old dogs, yeah. Yeah, me too. But as you know, Robin, I have three, three young dogs. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm so glad that you're thinking about getting a dog. No, we know. We know. This just looks like a big carnival strike tent. <laughs> oh. I, don't, I don't see any water. It's wonderful. You you need to work on the water a little bit, but um, but you can do that. You 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 gotta 
you'll do some practicing on water on paper. You you've got you've got all the elements there. You want to take your knife and go across and smear them. Okay. I'll show you. Let me get a piece of paper. Let me show you what I mean. Let's see. Can I reach that? Ugh. Can I reach it without falling on my head? If I go call 911. Oh, that's not even a well, that's okay. So, Robin, you've got this, what it looked like. Blue, 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 white, white, white. Do you have something like that? Yes. That's sort, yeah. sort of what your water looks like? Okay. Yes. All right. So what we want to go from there is you want to take your knife and go across it. Remember the surface of water is always flat. So go across it in flat lines. You can just go, you can go just across that if you want. You don't even have to go back and forth. So here's your blue. Here's your blue. I'll take a darker blue just to show you better. Then even without moving the knife back and forth and back and take your, take knife, take knife white and go across the surface of the water like that. Just and even I'm a straight line. And I'm using the edge, not my flat. And I'm using the edge. Right, you're flat. using the edge. Uh-huh. And even if you're forth, you're using your edge. The thing about water is, so you see what you get? You get you get depth paint down you get the deepness of the water from painting down and then you get the surface by going across okay. this 3d thing so you you've got the basis of your water really well right there thank you um sheila what about yours can, you're welcome can we see yours <laughs> okay. Oh, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You do have a red building there. It's terrific. Yeah. Ooh. And you've got the same, you've got sort of the same stuff that she's got. Now, your water is, you're going to want to have your water match your sky color a little bit more closely. Um, okay. And then, so you've got kind of gray water, right? You've got kind of grayish water going okay. down, going down, going down, going down. Uh -huh. So you, you're going to want to do the same thing with your water. And that is take white and just on and draw it across. Let me get more grayish water on there. Okay. Water, water reflects the color of the sky, which is why you, you want your... The, your, your water and your sky to be more or less the same. So here's your gray. And then if you take the edge of your knife and go across, it says, it says the eye reflection. Okay. If you take your knife and go forth with that, with, it says kind of moving. With white on, right? With white. Okay. white white's the easiest to deal with at this point. Yeah, yeah. So... But I think both of you are for an hour. You've got great stuff on here for an hour, but I'm not done with you yet. <laughs> um, part of the reason is, first of all, to get you accustomed to Carrie, painting quickly, kind of but also, and I, I can't, can't do any better. Okay. I don't think. Yeah, my internet. Yes. Yeah, way better. Better, better. You still okay. want to make your, when you go back to it, when you go to your finishing part of it, mm -hmm. Sheila, you want to make that water bluer, more like your, your sky color. Bluer. But you don't okay. have to do that now. Well, more, more okay. like than the sky. 
I know my internet is really bad today, ladies. I'm so sorry. Oh, wait a minute. I might be, it looks like I just got better internet, but I might lose you for a minute. Oh, okay. shall we try it? Okay. Sure. All right, I'm going to try it. I'm going to the other internet. We'll see what happens. Um, come back if I lose you, okay? No, never mind. It just, it just got crappy again. I don't know what's going on. All right. So I want to show you how to make trees because I, I, do, I do good trees. So, okay. Take a dark color on your knife and put your knife upside down like this and draw it up while turning it. You are going to be at the absolute edge of control. Um, and especially when you go in that direction. N nature does not think, you, you, you don't have to do it going up, but it's much better if you do it going up. Nature um, does not do things symmetrically. Uh, You know, limbs seek light, and just seek light, and so they go wherever they want to go. And so to really paint good trees, you want to almost lose it on every branch. <laughs> okay. And then when you have your dark color down on your tree, then same as the fence poles, you want to go back with a brighter color. So I'm going to go back with her and then think of where the, the light is coming from. The white would be better. And put that nice bright edge on every branch that you put on there. Now you can also do trees with just the single, the single, um, fast stroke, like I told you yesterday, my friend, Cynthia Rosen, this is how she makes it, trees, just like this, just like that. She uses trees, she says, as for excitement. So she doesn't bother with the curving branches and the, the, the twisty things. Um, and the thing about trees is, I remember saying to somebody, oh my God, I'm, how do you paint trees? I'm never going to be able to paint trees. And she said, paint a thousand trees and you'll be able to paint trees. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. You want it on the trunk too, right? The uh -huh. white? Yep. Yes, you do. Probably more than anything on the trunk because it's your biggest um, surface on the tree. And if it's springtime and you want to put little bits of green up here, you can. It was springtime. The leaves were just starting to come. They tell you not to ever do separate leaves like that, but you know what? If you want to, go ahead, especially in the springtime. Then start looking for highlight places. So the tips of your grasses. And eyes of things. Um, shadows. Shadows are going to be on the left hand sides of things. You want to make a shadow if you want to make a shadow from the tree. Just take your paint and draw it along your, over your field. And remember that shadows always touch the things 
that are causing them. So your shadow is never disconnected from the, the tree or the person or the fence post. Now I'm making my field flat, but if you want it to be really fancy, you could put a lump in the field and you know, really draw. And you can put in all of the trees, none of the trees. It was Texas, but it was Eastern Texas. Oops. It's a good idea to put your sky in before you put your complicated tree branches in. Uh, since you now know how to paint over paint, With trees, you always want to leave sky holes. You know, do, do you guys know what sky holes are? They're these things. No. Where you can see the sky through the branches of the trees and it, it makes them much more realistic. Okay. When you leave your sky holes. Okay. I'm gonna put a third tree in. It's kind of like things in threes, I'll put that. I'll put that tree back there, but I'm not going to put that whole long string of trees in. Although, it would be nice. Are you two taking any other classes at um, ALL? Uh, I think I'm supposed to take one more, but I don't remember which it is. <laughs> you doing the, the, the memoir class, Robin? Is it even being offered? I don't know. I don't think it was. Oh. I would have taken it if it had been. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Sheila? You taking any other? I took a I took a fishing class and then I've got um, a yoga class. Oh really? Oh ALL is doing a yoga class. Wow. I didn't know that. There's a huh. Who's teaching one it? of them the one I'm doing is I have no idea. I just saw the day I saw oh. chair yoga is what I'm taking. And I'm like Oh, there I am. Yeah, oh. I can do that. I can't get on the floor. Yes. So. No. It no, sounds I've interesting. I've done some chair yoga. It's fantastic. Yeah, it really is. And it All really. Right. Yeah. It, yeah. It helped me. Um, I still can't really get on the floor, but I almost can. Actually, I can now. But yeah, but chair yoga, it's great. I bet Linda Lang is teaching it. I don't know. No, she's when I took my chair other. yoga class from at um, what? She taught the other yoga class. Linda Lang did. Yeah. Or, yeah, at yoga. um. Historic Onancock School. That was. Yeah, they're having a. Is that where they're having the retreat? I don't know. It's like a yoga retreat. I think it's an all day thing. Oh, oh. I didn't even know that people were allowed in there yet, but I haven't been keeping up. And I, I don't really want to go in yet. Right. I don't. No. People are, but.
Now in the front, a thing that I really like to do, well, first of all, a lot of times I'll put a tree in the front and I spent years not putting trees in anything in the front because I just couldn't deal with it. So I might contemplate putting a tree right here, right? Like in the corner of this, even mm -hmm. though, you know, there's not a tree there. I don't know, might do that later. But in the very front of the painting, I have found a fun thing to do that um, puts interest in the front. And um, so I'm taking, this is a bunch of leftover paint from other paintings and these paintings, and it's just a smudge of different colors. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tall mm -hmm. grass right here in the front with the grassy strokes that we used yesterday, right at the end. So pick up mm -hmm. when you feel like you're done with your water and you're done with the stuff in the front, pick up a few colors. You know, this is a great place to experiment because you're making it all up. And uh, a friend of mine joked that, oh, Carrie, you always put sky in your cast. Well, I do because I usually have sky colors left over. And then just make some big, long, bright, fun grasses in the front. You can leave a lot of paint on there. You can curve them. Yeah, it's scary to go over everything that you, that you just painted. And you think, well, why did I paint it if I was just going to go over it? Well, what? <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to do it. So I'm, I'm going to leave some not grass over here. Yes, by that. Bring some of my dirt out. Why not leave a little pathway in over there? I'm not thrilled with the house reflection. I'm going to go back to it. That's better. I'm going to take some of my green and make some, do some of that scratchy grass up against the house. Put a little shadow in there too. Why not? I'm going to put some more scratchy grass over here between the fence posts. Highlights on that tree. Um, pink is a great highlight color. Um, and a thing I found is sometimes trying to get a painting brighter and brighter or parts of a painting brighter and brighter. And I realize that I can't. And what's really going on is that I don't have enough very dark places in it. So, yeah. Darks are lacking.
someday we'll be able to do this in person. Yes. Probably could in my studio if it was an if it was a nice day. And we could leave the so we could you know paint together in the yard, but you can't sure that you're gonna get a nice day. That's the thing. You like it? Mm -hmm. I like Good. the pink highlights. Good. Excellent. Yep, I'm liking it too. Yeah, you know, there's still plenty of work to do on these. Um, oh, and Sheila, um, I told this to Robin, she was over here yesterday. Um, when you they all, you know, whenever you can get cheap paint, get cheap paint, except for white. And white, okay. you really want, um, you want either this, which is a Lucas 1862 titanium white, or you want Permalba, okay. or you want Permalba, P-E-R-M-A-L-B-A. -E and the reason that okay. you want those two is that they, they yellow the least of any available oil paints over time. Whites tend okay. to yellow. Yeah. And it's it's worth oh. um it's worth paying the extra money for good for good whites. Um so that's a okay one thing I've learned the hard way. know probably 90% of these are election calls yeah. that's well it's probably my husband telling me he's he went up the road today to go hunting uh -huh. so it's probably him telling me he's there so I oh. I can wait on that okay right. well we're, we're probably we're basically done I think aside from questions and I'd love to see okay. your again um, yeah, so there's more to do with these, and um, uh, I would mm -hmm. say I would say try to do them in the next few days before. First of all, your paint dries, and secondly, you sort of forget. Um, and um, okay, so I'd love to see them when they're finished, but I'd, I'd also encourage you to call me or text me or email me or whatever for help if you need help finishing them. Okay. Thanks, Carrie. This okay. is well, great. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. You're welcome. What? It was question? a good time. Good. I had a good time too. And do you, you before did. we go, do you have questions now that I can help you all with now? Actually, I have a question. Okay. Um, you're, to get the atmospheric feeling where the horizon is lighter, uh -huh. do you tend to blend it more with the flat of the night? Is it a little foggier looking maybe. it's a little foggier looking yes and the blending with the edge of your knife it's 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 that's hard it's very hard to do um at that horizon but like i said you can take your finger and just run your finger lightly across see what's happening you probably can't but lightly across the space where the 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 sky and the land meet and you'll can, you'll really blur it thank you See the blur up there? Yes. You can do it with a knife too. Um, and in practice and, and over time, you will you'll get that. But um, it's still always easier for me to do it with my finger. 
That's what I'll do. Or, yeah, or you could use a brush. I mean, there's no, you know, you okay. can use a brush here. There's no rules about it. I just, I don't like brushes. Okay. I don't like cleaning them. Yeah. <laughs> what else? <laughs> okay. What other questions do you all have? I think that's it. I don't have any. Okay. All right. Well, I will send you the video from this. Um, like Thank I did yesterday, once I okay. get it up on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and I'll send you my painting too when I'm done with it, which will be a while. Uh, and I'd love to see yours when you're done, but call, you, you, okay. you, you both have my phone number. Call me if I can help you. And thank you so much. This was so fun. Thank you, yep. Carrie. Thank you. It was Bye. fun. Happy. Birthday. had a good time. Sheila, it was nice to meet you. Bye to all. Bye to both of you. Bye. Nice it meeting was so you nice also. To meet you, Sheila. Bye. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. It's nice same meeting prayers you. For my you hands. And your <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank Bye. you.